Hi there traders, welcome to Admiral Markets. Glad that you're here, looking forward to our strategy webinar with Admiral Markets. Uh, and we'll be taking a look at trend, basically trend trading, trying to find retracements, try to find continuation patterns. Before we dive into uh, live MT4 uh, charts, uh, be aware of these disclaimers. First of all, the fact that this webinar is shown to global audience doesn't mean it's suitable for everyone. Please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact the appropriate entity for more details to find out if it is suitable for you. Also, please note that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This uh, webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right. First of all, before we take a look at the live charts and talk a bit about strategy and some analysis, uh, please take a look at admiralmarkets.com later on. You'll find a lot of good info. This is wave analysis that I provide for Admiral Markets uh, every morning, often around um, 6 a.m. UK time, something like that. Uh, so we have plenty of time to uh, to take a look at that before the you know market uh, kicks off a bit with more with more volatility and more movement. Uh, but that's just one of those things that we offer: analytics, waves, with technical, fundamental. Uh, and that I like to provide uh, you know the analysis here and uh, there are articles. There are some tools that are useful, like sentiment and market heat map. And then there's education. Again, articles, courses at the bottom here, uh, webinars, as you probably know if you're live in the webinar, but if you're looking at the recording, you can join live webinars too. And of course, that's just uh, part of it. Then you have a lot of info about what to trade, how to trade, where you can trade, obviously as well. Uh, and that you can find out more about that in these particular buttons. All right, so a lot of good stuff. Definitely recommend taking a look um, and uh, checking that out. Uh, let me take a quick look at the market heat map, actually, uh, see what kind of movement we have. I'm kind of curious what currency pair actually is leading in its, uh, in its volatility. And uh, you can do that by scrolling lower. You can see the top movers of today, yesterday, and, and see what kind of currency pairs uh, could be moving uh, relatively fast. It's taking a bit longer to load, but typically, ah, here it is. Sorry. So... Looks like pound CAD, pound CAD, Euro CAD, pound dollar, New Zealand CAD. Yeah, the CAD indeed uh, making some strength against those, as you can see. And in New Zealand is the biggest mover, in fact. I was curious which one was now the had the, the most kind of movement. And in New Zealand, you know, did make a, a an interesting move against the CAD, for instance. Indeed, New Zealand CAD was was a big fall. Uh, New Zealand dollar was also downward pressure. So New Zealand is not obviously a typical pair. Normally it's the pound that is the bigger. That's why I was curious to take a look uh, because it did move quite a lot uh, over the last few hours. You can see euro second, pound third in this case, dollar quite at the bottom in fact. Dollar has been, and that doesn't surprise me either, dollar has been a bit choppy. I like to trade the dollar. Uh, but this week it's been a bit slow. This week it's been kind of yucky in a way. And you can see that translated uh, with regard to the currency range. The dollar is the, the least kind of movement uh, on that parallel. To get off the Swissy and, and the Aussie in a way. So this kind of confirms my uh, the sentiment that I had for, for, the, for the Forex market, at least uh, so far. But there are other as well within this currency range, by the way. I mean, it's not only currencies, I should say. There, uh, You can't see it now because whenever my MT4 is open, I have so many indicators and tools there. My, my, PC, <laughs> my PC slows a little bit down <laughs> with, with internet. Uh, not that the internet speed is it's high. It's you know 100 MB download. It's not that, but uh, it, it just the MT4 weighs a little bit because I have quite a lot of material on this particular MT4, on the other PC, I have less, and it's a bit fat. It's, it is normal speed, or uh, quick, I should say. Uh, so it kind of slows down a little bit with, uh, but anyhow, you would see other instruments, uh, normally speaking, besides this. Anyhow, uh, what happened to New Zealand, Ron is asking. Uh, I thought there was some New Zealand news. I'm checking it as we speak, but 
I, I don't see it actually. Uh, I I am now a bit confused because I thought there was some Aussie sorry Kiwi news. Uh, does anyone know by any chance? I'm trying to figure it out as we speak. Actually, what could be triggering that? I'm checking the news calendar, but I don't see any particular Kiwi event. Although I thought I remembered a Kiwi event. Anyhow, let's keep that open for the moment as I uh, multitask and try to figure that out. If anyone has an idea, let us know through the chat. In the meantime, we'll pull over the charts. Alrighty. So uh, I think that your dollar, we were talking about it yesterday, just very quickly. Uh, we were talking about the fact that when price was here uh, in this zone, right, that basically it's retesting the PP, the, the pivot point, and there's a good chance it will go sideways or make a bounce and bump into resistance. If it does go sideways, there could be a breakout to the upside and retest this resistance area. So indeed, there was no rush. Price went sideways for several hours, as you can see. And that's why I wanted to wait till the next morning before making trading decision uh, because of the fact that I was counting on a corrective zone, you know, as we see uh, developing uh, indeed in real life. So that's what I was discussing uh, pre-fact yesterday. Remember that? So we got the zone, sideways zone. Uh, price bouncing off the bottom of the zone and making a breakout to the upside. I said there could be a breakout trade here uh, to the upside, but realize that you are bumping into resistance, I think at least, because of the bigger corrective potential down to the S1. So price did make the breakout, but will it bounce here or continue to make another bigger breakout? That question remains open at this point. Uh, I think that Anyone trading it early, like here, could move to break even and hope for a breakout and hope to get more pips, right? Nothing lost, potential for more pips. Anyone wanted to trade now, I would say it's not interesting because of the fact that uh, it's right in front of resistance, right? It's right in front of 118.25 top. It's right at the resistance trend line. Not interesting to go long, in my view. I would rather wait for a break pattern pull back or pull back and continue. Or depending on how this candle looks like, right, there could be a reversal setup. Now, the focus of this strategy webinar is actually with the trend. So I won't dive into that too much. Um, but potentially, yeah, there could be, if there's some weakness here, there could be some downward correction like this, right? And then again, up again. So, but from my perspective, with the trend setups are in this zone, and from the S1. One is a break, one is a pullback. There could have been a small setup here, as I already said earlier, break of this trend line. But that's already behind us. So it doesn't make sense to discuss that, right? Uh, will it break or bounce? Time will tell. It, it really, I don't want to necessarily uh, speculate on that. I think it's 50 50, I think, personally. All right. That's a quick update on the euro dollar. In the meantime, I'm double checking this Kiwi stuff. And wait, I have to change something. Okay. So yeah, let's move on. Retracements or basically generally speaking with the trend setups, right? That's the focus of today. So how can we measure pullbacks? How can we measure uh, retracements within the trend? So there are a couple of things I like to, to use. Um, we can use trend channels, right? Look for price to move within uh, basically the bottom of a trend channel. So if we have a trend channel like this, right? We want price to get to the bottom of that zone, right? So we know that that's a pullback. Those are, that's very valid, right? Uh, we could wait for fractal. So we have an uptrend, for instance, right? And we can wait for support fractal to, to appear and then try to take basically the bounce after that. We can wait for the oscillator, right? As soon as the oscillator gets back uh, below the slight, slight pullback, 
going below the zero line and slightly or, or close to it with an uptrend that could indicate that this is kind of a retracement. Uh, what else do we, what can we use? Moving averages, of course. We can use pullbacks to 89, 144 EMA, 21, 34 EMA. That could indicate pullback too, right? So there are a lot of ways of looking at pullbacks. We can use the Keltner indicator, which is part of the MT4 Supreme Edition. Say, okay, uh, price is testing the support level here. That could be a bouncing spot, right? That's just a hypothetical uh, example at this moment. But just to, just to prove the point that you can use these bands as well. Uh, so, you know, often enough, my analysis may be a bit, uh, because I, you know, do, have done analysis so often, I can do it pretty quick. I mean, if you would take it step by step and you would go through supportive resistance, you would take a look at patterns, you would take a look at trend and momentum on multiple time frames. If you're just starting out, that could be, you know, it could take some time. It could maybe, you know, you wouldn't be as certain maybe about your analysis at the beginning. So a shortcut in a way to that, uh, that's a comprehensive, fuller analysis, uh, could be just to, to focus on pullbacks within the trend, right? Because reversal trades require quite a lot of confirmations. They're more difficult. Um, trading lower time frames is also a bit more dicey because you have to check more time frames. You have to know that there's space. And, and the reason for that is because if you are trading 50 minute chart, right, you, you would have to really catch good momentum. It's possible, but it takes a little bit of extra step to make sure that there is that, that space available to trade it. And because if you don't trade that space, if you don't trade that momentum on a lower time frame, you could get stuck in a choppy price action point and price just goes sideways and you're eventually you kind of feel that the, the trade is you're not in control of the trade you never are in control of the trade but you are really at the mercy of the market even more so than ever if you are trading momentum on a lower time frame you have at least a better idea about when it's still going your way or when it's time to lock in profit. For instance, um, because otherwise on lower time frames, there's a, there's a high chance of some choppiness and sideways movement. So the quickest way of trading, in my view, without too much analysis when you're starting out, is to trade uh, medium time frames, not higher time frames necessarily, although that's fine too, because those are slower charts. If you, it de so it depends on what type of trader you, how much, how much time you can spend on trading, etc. Uh, I think four hour chart, one hour chart, looking for pullbacks is probably with, within the trend is an effective way of learning. Um, is without the need to go into too much analysis necessarily. All right. Let me give you some examples. I've yeah, I'm maybe a bit you know a bit theoretical. Uh, let's take a look at Ozzy, for instance. Let's take a look at the 50 minute chart here. All right, so let me clean up the chart a bit. Uh, I'm doing fine, Angel. Definitely. How are you? You're you're uh, looking at gold. I can imagine very closely. And we're definitely going to take a look at gold. I didn't forget uh, your email. We're going to after this one. We're going to take a look. <laughs> um, Let's see, Ozzy, I, just to give you an example, 50 minute chart. So it's not to say that it's impossible to trade. I'm just saying that it requires a bit more 
flexibility and kind of quick quickness. The, the charts go quicker. Uh, you need to be more aware of multiple support and resistance levels. So if you think that, for instance, that this is a breakout to the downside, we got a 50 minute downtrend, then you certainly would be right with that, right? But it didn't go anywhere. It's just going sideways. But if you look at the one hour chart, you would figure out, hey, yeah, 50 minute chart is down, but look at the bigger formation, look at the bigger structure, you know, and we got resistance, higher, a lower high, we have a support level here close by, and we have momentum to the upside, for instance, like this, right? So, you know, could it, is, is this something that could continue downwards, or is it the triangle, or will it be continuing this range? So if you, if you don't look at higher time frames, you might miss that on a 50-minute chart, if you only look at the 50-minute chart. So a 50-minute chart is not really a great chart for analysis, in my view. It's okay to trade if there's good momentum. Let's take a look at the pound yen. You'll see what I mean. All right, so if there's good momentum, that's fine. Like here, great momentum to the downside on the pound yen, right? Uh, then we had correction. And what does that mean? Correction after downside. Yes, possibility for continuation of downside, right? So with a momentum like that, yes, we can look at 50-minute chart, right? And try to sneak in one of those trades to, as a continuation, right? Uh, it could be, for instance, somewhere here. We already see some momentum on the 15, and the next break could be a good way to, to trade it. And that's fine because it's kind of like, you're trading the continuation of a higher time frame and you're expecting momentum. And then it's good to trade 50 minute chart. So I'm not saying that 50 minute chart is, is bad. It's just that it, uh, it's good to trade if, if you expect more movement, if you expect a bigger push and you have reason to trade it on a higher time frame. Then kind of adding a trade or finding a continuation trade on lower time frame makes sense. If you're just trying to find a trade on lower time frame, just like that, at any point, there's a high chance that you're going to get stuck in choppiness. Alternatively, if you're looking for a reversal for whatever reason, and you're just looking for a trigger, looking for an entry, let's say you're looking for a reversal to the downside here, right? Where could we find weakness? Here, maybe, with the head and shoulders pattern or a weakness here, for instance. So you, that's also possible to look at it as a trigger chart. But it's, it's important not to emphasize too much analysis on it. So how can we figure out whether, like the Pang Yen, for instance, is making a correction within the downtrend? So one of the things, oh, Ron is giving me some info here. There's a link there. I'm not sure if you can see it. But Ron is pointing out to, to an article that says, Kiwi Sharp below lower after budget figures fail to offer support. So that's, in, that's something to, to factor in. So let's take a look at this. So you can see momentum. So what are the key kind of points here for a trend? Well, obviously, price is making clear lower lows and lower highs on this pound yen. Yes, there was divergence, potential divergence, although there was no move back to the zero line as yet. So it was not completed yet. It has to go all the way back to the zero line before it's confirmed divergence, okay? Otherwise, we still have actually a downtrend. Lower lows are highs, price below the long-term moving average, all right? Below the weekly pivot point. I only chart recently clear momentum and a clear correction like this, all right? So I was talking yesterday about a break below 139.75, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's see, which is this bottom, I believe, or maybe one lower. Uh, maybe I was talking about 140. I don't remember, but somewhere in here, something like that. So uh, also pound odd, I was talking about continuation lower, but price didn't really break the bottom as yet. Uh, so you can see these are all factors that play a role. And you can just add a moving average, you can add trend channels, and you will see that you know the angle is is there 
the channels there. So these are all tools that you can use to confirm. Now, how do you know whether there's space or not for continuation? And that's what I use my WIS tool. And the WIS tool is for free. You can, you can get it for me, no problem. So I add the WIS tool to the top here. And this helps me understand if there's space, potential space for continuation. So I see the trend. I see a correction. But is there, you know, after it breaks, is there a follow through? So what we can do, one thing is we can measure, we can see this uh, correction. So we can measure the pole, which is from here to here. All right. And we can subtract the pole from the top. So what we can do is measure this, which is about 320 pips, and subtract it from this, which brings us to about 137.80, all right? So that's a lot of space. Then we can look at the WIS tool and we see level one, level two, level three, level four. It's be below level four. It hasn't hit the log to moving average. This has all to do with the WIS tool. So level five is open. So yes, A, one, we have a trend, two, we have a pullback that is a shallow pullback. It doesn't go back uh, to the long to moving average. And three, yes, we have space to continue. So trend, pullback, continuation. We have it all on the Pang Yen. All right. Um, and the target for that is 139. The first target, 139.25. A break below that, and we could see acceleration uh, to the 137.80, which is the pull target, right? This, this pull target, what I was measuring from here to here like this, and we have an S2, and the bottom of the channel, and the potential fifth level, I think it was. Let me recount that again. One, two, three, four, five, six level. All right. So now about entries. How can we enter this? What would be a good time to enter? So we need to find, basically, this itself is the pullback, right? But how do we find the entry within that pullback? And that's always a, a bit tricky. Uh, what what point do you take the trade within the correction? Because sometimes the correction can last longer, it can continue. So there are two ideas. You can take the bounce or the breakout within this correction. Uh, the breakout would be, one breakout would be taking this break, right? Right here. Put the stop loss above it. You have to live through a bit of pullback, but then continue. Another breakout could have been here. That's an earlier one. Uh, a little bit better price, uh, later one, sorry, a little bit better price. Pull, uh, bounces are also possible, right? Uh, you see an ABC correction and some weakness here to break this top. That could be a bounce. Here, engulfing twin could be a bounce. So bounce breakout tr potential um, using candlesticks, fractals, trend lines, moving averages. Those are all potential setups. If you, you know, if I look quickly at my SWOT template, you would see that entries on the pound yen were here with the arrow here and here, right? So the template is basically trying to trade the continuations not the first turn, no, but basically kind of the, the first moment where we can trade a bounce. So as you have a correction, right, eventually it's going to try to turn. So it's, it's positioning itself that it's trying to, to take the turn without predicting, without trying to use one particular level, but rather trying to trade a turn as price kind of confirms the term. So this setup was good, as you can see here, and even this one was fine. You just had to live through a little bit of pullback and has been moving down lower. So as, as you see this momentum, there are maybe opportunities on a 50 minute chart. Let's take a look at New Zealand CAD.
There we go. So basically, we were looking at one hour charts, but you could, I mean, basically, we could do the same on a, on a four hour chart, try to establish the structure, the trend, and we can see the trend is down, prices below the long term moving average, it's pretty simple. And uh, basically, look for pullback continuation. So, what could be a pullback? What could be a retracement or pattern? So here we see a pattern, right? Here we see a bear flag pattern. Uh, here we see a support trend line like this. And uh, we could be trading pullbacks. So here on the Kiwi, for instance, we see a clear uh, momentum. So we might be thinking about putting a FIB, waiting for a pullback and continuation. It could be very, uh, very valid on this time frame. Uh, we can put, take a quick look at the one hour chart. Look at the WIS tool, see how far it is, see how much space there is. One, two, three, we're below the third level, close to the fourth level. So we want to wait. Want to, it's the S3 is close by too, so it's not good to short it now. There could be a bounce. If it does bounce at this you know, area with S3 and the fourth WIS level, uh, there could be a retracement to the 38.2 FIB, for instance, right? There could be a good pullback, looking for a pullback here for continuation lower. That would make sense. So very quickly, trend could be done very quickly using a 144 EMA, 89 EMA, uh, we can spot it pretty fast, right? If there's a trend. Pullback could be a pattern or move to the FIB. And a continuation uh, could be a simple AO turn. It could be a fractal. It could be a candlestick pattern, which is great. Candlestick patterns are lovely for such things, in my opinion. Um, it could be... Let's see. So, yeah, there are a lot of options. There could be candlesticks at... The fibs. There could be uh, chart patterns and breaks of those chart patterns, but basically it boils down to, measure, to catching the continuation by using uh, retracements, fibs for retracements, or patterns, and using candlesticks to confirm that. So that's so once again very quickly. Trend. Trend. Two, using MA is the quickest. Uh, two is a pullback, of course, sorry, which we can use um, uh, patterns and FIBS. And then three is continuation. And we can use candlestick patterns to confirm the continuation. And this can be done in one hour, four hour. This, I think, is probably the easiest to start with, in my view. Um, daily chart is fine too, it's just that everything is a bit slower. So it depends what type of trader you are, how much you want to trade, etc. And this can be done pretty, fa <clears throat> pretty fast. This can be you know, not require too much analysis. The only question is, of course, which one is trending, which is trending the best. Uh, and for that, you can use some tools that Ivan Markets has too. You can use the correlation uh, matrix. Uh, so you're not trading too much on one pair, or you can use the market sentiment, market uh, movement. You can see New Zealand is moving a lot. So you can focus a bit on New Zealand. That is the uh, market heat map, for instance. Because there are a lot of currency pairs. There are a lot of instruments. There are even more of these, obviously. Uh, one of the things that does take time is maybe just scanning the charts find which one is trending the most. You can use those kind of tools to, to make a shortcut with that. Uh, you can just browse through all charts very quickly and, and look at, uh, and add a 21 EMA, add a 21 EMA and have a 144 and the one, the chart that has good dif difference or, or distance or gap between 21 and 144 is the one that is trending the most, right? Another way of doing it. Uh, but the market heat map, yeah, pretty good shortcut in my view. I mean, we found out New Zealand is a big mover, so that, 
and you can see that on um, here when looking at this table right pound uh, pound cat pound dollar New Zealand cat right Euro cat I think yeah gives already a pretty good impression um, so I think that uh, if you're looking for set, setups that require less thinking, let's say, less analysis, less time, not too much checking, it helps to trade on a one hour, four hour, 50 minute chart requires a bit more checking. Reversal trades require more checking. Uh, trend trades, you can check quickly, scan quickly, and it's I think easier to find pullback continuations and you have the momentum on your side. So you're kind of like swimming with the river in a way when you trade with the, with the trend setups. I, uh, ZT is asking me if I use one hour chart or 50 minute chart. I use, I do use 50 minute charts, but it's just that 50 minute setups are are like continuation trades on the hourly chart. So I need to see your momentum and basically you're often add-ons or, or extra trades when there's a good good space, good momentum, etc. More important overall is the one hour chart for me. All right, so that's just kind of like the main message of this uh, Webinar series is, is looking for trend setups. But I realize that sometimes, you know, my analysis is a bit longer, uh, could be longer for some of you uh, if you're starting out. I mean, I can do it faster, but it's because I've also been doing it for, for many, many years, right? This way of trading. And I wanted to hand out kind of a way how you, anyone hopefully could do it quicker. Now it's time for gold. <laughs> Let's move on to the golden pair of gold, the commodity XAUUSD. A coincidence, I saw yesterday an interesting movie about gold. 30 minutes, not a movie, but a documentary on YouTube. Uh, it was interesting, uh, explaining um, basically how gold will go up versus the dollar, very simply put. And uh, it had to do with the combination of the dollar and the petrodollar, basically. Uh, the fact that uh, China, Russia, other China's importer and other export countries are making oil imports and exports on the Japanese currency, which could be converted into gold according to this movie and this, uh, this, this, uh, this video. And that puts basically pressure on the dollar, making it weaker. We see some dollar weakness, of course, in the last few weeks against the uh, basket of currencies. Um, despite the potential for the interest rates to go up. Now, of course, the dollar interest rates, how much can they go up before the debt, the repayment of the debt, would be, become quite expensive for the US. There is probably some limit to that indeed. So can the interest rates go up to 4% like they did in the past? They could, but it could be quite expensive. Uh, it could be a problem. So maybe that could be one of the factors where the dollar is not moving up as much. These are fundamental things. You know, so it's uh, it's more difficult regarding the timing. That's why I like technical analysis more. Uh, but ultimately, the the case that the video was trying to make is that the gold is bullish versus the dollar, basically, right? The long term. And I agree with that. I think those were solid arguments. You know, it's a 30-minute video, so I, it's difficult to explain everything. Um within that video, but it made sense to me, solid arguments, a lot of, lot of numbers. <laughs> so yeah, I, I am bullish on XAU USD, as you know, already from the past. Uh, in fact, for my own trading, I was looking at 
uh, for a bounce here on the daily chart at this you can see this upside I was looking for a bounce at the 76 point fib five days not breaking this low to me indicated this low 78.6 indicated the bounce because this was a retracement within we had upside retracement ABC retracement I was looking for the first what I wanted is the momentum to finish and then once the momentum was finished take the first bounce so for me time factor five to six days looking at the daily chart so one two three four five six in here and that was a pretty good pick 11.35 price is still above that right been moving up up and then sideways let's zoom out let me refresh the chart and let's take a look at it from a clean clean slate so what does this say from my point of view this is a wave four so wave five could start soon uh this could take a while still who knows when that but they hit the 50 fib and at one point or another fifth the wave five will start where, where can the wave five take us well i wouldn't be surprised if it could take us back to the previous top, that's conservative. If not, all the way to the minus 272 target, which somehow I cannot reach. But it should be somewhere above 2100. I cannot get there somehow. I don't know why. Oh, wait, hang on. I don't remember which fib to use. I guess it's this one. I don't want to waste too much time on that. 2360. And you never know. It can go even further than that, right? But that's, who knows? Let's not waste too much time on that. So 50% bounce. So this is the first bounce at the 50 fib. This could be a hook back. This could be wave two. This could be wave one. Are we starting wave three now? Or is this a complex, a bigger wave two before we start wave three? So to measure that, we would probably need a break of this and a break of this to really have more confirmation of a, of a bigger upside starting. So key levels, in any case, 1360, 1340, important level. Then, uh, of course, also important, this bottom, which is the first bounce. Then we can put a fib from that low to that high, and we see the 78.6 fib I was talking about, right? That was that five-day uh, failure to break this low, because I realized that 78.6 fib is, is probably going to be wave two. It's an important bouncing spot. Um, that's that particular fib we talked about. So what could happen? We gotta, is, if, the, if it is a wave three, if the wave theory started, we're going to have a breakout here. First, above here to the minus 61.8 target. That's the first step. And then if there's continuation, further like this. All right. Now, there's no guarantee it will, it will break and continue. The minus 61.8 target, the alternative could be that this is still an ABC and we expand the correction. Because this is a wave four. Wave four can take years who knows it you know that's something we have to reckon with uh here gold was an in internal sleep uh, eternal sleep sorry for for decade right <laughs> so um this way four has not really lasted too long i know it has really been for us it seems long because it's been since 2011 exactly six years when it peaked august uh, august yeah august 2011 right so six years now seems long for us but uh, in market terms it's really not that much so we have to see so this breakout trade looks good right here because even if it's an ABC or a one two three this zone here looks interesting if it breaks above the minus 61.8 we have these zones as well to aim for alternatively if it doesn't break but bounces there could be a correction like this sideways correction like that it could retest the 78.6 fib but not break the low this bottom that's the invalidation level and we can see it upside again so 
Let's dive into this piece now, basically, to see a bit more information about that. All right. So we see, from my point of view, looking at wave patterns at least, five waves up. Ah. Oh, by the way, Ron also saw an interesting documentary about gold. Switzerland buying from Brazil, apparently. Five waves up, three waves down. All right, so uh, this could be still a correction and continue like this, all right? It's possible that this is a wave A, this is a B, and this is a C. We need to know more about this structure. I can't see too much on this weekly chart, so let's take a look at the daily chart. And this is something I already discussed before. Uh, is this an A, B, C? Or is this a one, two, three, four, five? And the thing is that this particular piece is 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 a bit um, difficult because it is a very sh short and small wave one two. Technically, it could count, and that's why it really, from my point of view, could could be both ways. I was leaning so far towards one two three four five. All right, and that this is a bigger correction, and that the wave three could start soon. In fact, that this is already ABC over, and this is the start of wave three. Uh, although there could be still within wave three, there could still be a wave one, two, like this, and then a wave three. So despite the fact that this could be a wave three, I was still expecting here a bounce for the wave two, maybe halfway before upside. But all in all, the real confirmation level is the break of this top and the trend line. Before that, uh, it is still, it, it could turn both either way, in fact. So most important is looking at price action. Price action at resistance, how does it handle, so if, it, if it gets up there, high, price action at higher resistance and current resistance, and price action at support levels. This is a major decision zone, definitely. So far, price action showed us a pretty good candlestick pattern, uh, a bearish pin bar at resistance. Price is going sideways. Break below the support, we might see this move halfway the zone. Break above the R1, and we could see an upside, a small upside. Break, pull back, continue up to 1350, perhaps. Break below the pivot point, break, continuation, down. Maybe halfway, maybe to the bottom, maybe below the bottom. So important decision decision zone on, on gold. Um, let's take a look at the weekly candle. Doji indecision. I think any candlestick pattern trader will be looking for shorts considering this pin bar because it has a big wick, it's a bearish candle, it has a good run up, and there's a major resistance level. So any kind of candlestick pattern trader would probably see it as a no-brainer to, to take a short here. Will it work out? We don't know. No one knows. It's always unknown. But you know, most price action candlestick, tra candlestick pattern traders that are looking at daily candles, uh, looking at pin bars, looking at candlestick patterns, they will be looking at a bounce here. Uh, so what could, so either a bearish candle, daily candle below the pivot point close, that could solidify an up downside, or if there's a strong bullish candle that breaks above 1290 like this, not even necessarily breaking above the R1, but a bullish close like this, might already be enough to challenge and see the break to the upside. So I think at the very minimum, candle will need to close the very minimum before it's interesting to trade below 1281 or 1293. But that close, that direction might indicate upside or downside. Downside to 1250 or upside to 1350. And then there are new decision zones waiting for us. 
So, but yeah, all in all, it's an interesting zone, but the real interesting uh, spots are here and probably here and here. All right, so let's see. This could be a very interesting rally on gold if, you know, and when it happens. All righty, let's take a look at your odd. Definitely, we can take a look at that. All right, so I was already a bit hesitant on your odd because of the lack of a trend. And why is that? Well, price is right around the moving average. So this is one of those like situations where it requires, it's less clear. It requires more time, more effort, more analysis. And even if you do that, it doesn't mean that you're going to be trading it at the right spot. It is one of those pairs that is just not really trending at this point that well. Doesn't mean it cannot move, it just means that if you compare it to trending pairs, which one is maybe better? Now, in a daily chart, one can argue for an uptrend. But on a four hour chart, it, it's very choppy. Right, a moving average. Uh, it did break to the upside, and you can see that even using kind of trend lines, simple trend lines, uh, basically just like waiting for price to decide can sometimes be very effective without doing too much analysis. Just looking for triggers, saying, okay, this is resistance. It's a pattern. Just looking for patterns, basically. Just looking for simple patterns, a break of those patterns. Uh, it's a pattern that could break to both sides. There's not really a strong trend. So if it breaks to the upside or to the downside, right, there could be a breakout up or down. Right, so looking at this, you can see, okay, we've got a breakout candle. You can look for a pullback. I don't like this, or maybe or maybe on the candle itself like that, right? 61.8 fib and continuation. Break, pullback, continuation. There's no great trend here but it just shows that it is not necessarily needed in all cases i mean sure the trend helps i'm not saying that this is uh, the daily chart does have a trend to the upside anyhow so not the four hour but the daily does so even using simple trend lines like that looking at patterns basically breaks of those patterns uh, could basically provide trade setups provide triggers provide uh, Know, ways to to enter a chart. Uh, you're in New Zealand. Oh, I have my my own template on, so maybe we can take a look at that. You can see New Zealand weakening already, as well uptrend as you can see. And on our chart, you can see. Blue candles above the moving averages and a good breakout to the upside. All right, and setups here, here before the breakout already. If we use a, our, our standard template at the year New Zealand. All right, we can see uptrend on daily four hour, higher highs, higher lows very quickly. One hour chart. Break of this resistance. All right, looks like a rising wedge perhaps. Nope, break to the upside. So th those are all potential triggers within this uh, uptrend. Right? You can put a trend line like that or a trend line like this perhaps as well. 
that's how you can use trend lines as well to, to look for breakouts. So once you have the breakout, right, then it is possible if, you, if, you, if your analysis says that there's potential space, you can look at lower time frames to catch a bit more of this part, right? Because eventually on a one hour chart, the entries are gone. You had a pullback opportunity perhaps here, right? Break pullback. You had a breakout opportunity perhaps here. And those are good setups on the hourly chart. But then price continues higher and higher. And then there's no, no chance to enter on a one hour chart anymore, but there could be a chance on a 50 minute chart. We can use the WIST tool to see how much space there is and where. So let's put it at the bottom. Because we know that there's an uptrend on the, on the four hour chart. We know that New Zealand was weakening against the year in New Zealand. There's an uptrend on the four hour, uptrend on the daily. So using the moving averages, we can see that. On a one hour chart, there are some breaks. Uh, that could be opportunities some pullbacks that could be opportunities uh, and eventually prices are going to move with momentum where can we expect momentum and we use with tool we know that it's the third level often that the break of the third level or the fourth level that sees the most momentum this is the first this is the second this is the third and indeed look at that from three to four in one straight shot and four to five well it's getting close to it right so when price breaks here you know the the whiz tool indicates that there's a higher chance of a momentum. So it could be an hourly setup, it could be a 50 minute chart. Those are moments where 50 minute charts could make sense. So on a 50 minute chart, if you're trading like this, you, I mean, if you have the, the whiz, sorry, this, you know, with the system template that I use, you would probably see arrows and blue candles confirming entries. If you're trading naked like this, you could wait for uh, the breakout candle on a 15 minute chart itself or the pullback. I'm trying to, try to draw a trend line quickly, but it doesn't work. You can draw a trend line like this, right? Wait for the break of that. Try to trade a continuation. Now, the best is to do it relatively in, at the beginning or the middle. Here, when you're getting towards the tail end of it, when you're getting close to the target, like like the fifth whiz level, price is going to slow down. It's going to get choppier as it gets closer to the target. And those trades are riskier. All right, at the beginning, not at the very beginning, but at the end of the beginning, the beginning of the middle part are typically the best trades for 50 minute chart because you can expect the continuation to last for a while still. When it slows down, when there's divergence, when it's kind of like it will get more choppier and there could be, this could stop and you could get a one hour pattern and you don't want to get stuck in that because that could take a while. There could be a big bull flag on the one hour chart and yeah, that's, that's, that's annoying. All right. So. Good, good continue. Somehow it's good. Uh, 50 minute chart setups would be more uh, upon the break. It could be a one hour setup too. It could be here. It could be, you know, here even, but not now anymore. Now, I think that uh, it would be good to see probably one hour pattern, one hour bull flag like this. And I think it's okay. I think that, as I said, it's an uptrend. Uh, you know, if we look at our checklist, trend, yes, check. Do we, ha do we have a, uh, a, a basically a pullback? No, not at the moment. We did have it here. And we had a three to break out here on the one hour, 50 minute chart. But now it has lasted for a while. It could still push a little bit. Don't get me wrong. But the reward to risk is not that great anymore. So rather wait for a pullback, a pattern or pullback, and trade the continuation and i think it's okay to trade one more time but i would like to see a pattern of pullback with pullback i mean uh some kind of uh perhaps even a, a small zigzag or some kind of bull flag like this all right great so that answers uh mocha's uh question Asai Sied is asking off the top a question about the WIS tool when trading the one hour time frame. Do we draw it on the same time frame or higher time frame? Uh, I use it on the one hour chart. I use it primarily on the one hour chart and sometimes on the 50 minute chart, sometimes on the four hour chart. 
mainly on the hourly chart, sometimes 15, sometimes four hours. It's, you can use it on a daily chart too, but then you have to ignore the first three levels. Unfortunately, it is, I forgot to, there is a, there is a difference. You see different levels plotted on the 15 compared to an hourly chart, but I forgot to do the same for the daily chart when I had it programmed, unfortunately. So if you use it on the daily chart, you can still use it, but ignore the first three le uh, levels. So level four is actually the first level on the, on the, on the daily chart. Um, my primary chart is the hourly. I like it the most on the hourly. And if it's, it's great when price has passed the third level or fourth on the hourly, because that's where we can expect the most momentum. Pound Yen had it. Basically, this week, pound odd, although it didn't go too far, uh, it had a two. Uh, it is also below the third level. You see, it's it's far from the long to moving average. The New Zealand pound cat had a two. New Zealand cat, I think, had a two. So one of the, the tricks I do is I just look at one hour charts, and I only use... You know, just very quickly, just use the WIS tool. That's it. Only the WIS tool. Right? It's even simpler than the version I just talked to, to you about, which was trend pullback continuation. Although that, I tried to simplify it too. An even simpler version of that is just looking at the WIS tool on the one hour chart. That's it. <laughs> you know? And seeing which, which, which pair has passed the third level. That's a very, very quick short shot, shortcut. But from my view, very effective and, uh, and very useful. And let's take a look at that New Zealand CAD, for instance, or pound CAD. So uh, level one, two, three. And it's not to say that you cannot trade it before the third level is broken. Sure, it's possible. I'm just saying that once it breaks the third level, that's typically where we see the most movement. So those are interesting pairs if they are available. Uh, typically, if you look at 25 pairs, yeah, there are often there are a few that are past the third level. New Zealand CAD broke the third level here earlier today, as you can see, right? So uh, could have been a 50-minute setup, maybe one hour setup, uh, but more 15 probably on this this extension. Pound CAD. So yeah, I'm definitely a big fan of, of the Wiz tool because it, it does cover a lot of of boxes in a way uh, or points of analysis. Good shortcut. Pound CAD. Right, this is the four-hour chart. I made a mistake there. Uh, let's see. I should use a slightly lower one. Slightly lower top. All right, let me show you this pound cat. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Where where is the space on this chart? I should use red. Bingo, right? <laughs> In a way, I don't want to say it's necessarily the holy grail. Nothing is a holy grail, but very valuable tool for my trading though. That is for sure. And you can see that uh, when you have past third level, right, uh, there's could be, you know, when you have a pullback, you got space to the fourth. When you have pullback, you got space to the fifth. When you have pullback and continuation, you might have space to the sixth. Now the sixth level, of course, price doesn't always get to the sixth level because it's already quite a far target. But does it help with identifying where there's space? Does it help identify which, which chart is impulsive and trending? Does it help the confidence level of taking uh, a pullback continuation setup on that pair? Definitely. In my view, yes. Definitely helps. So that's a quick shortcut with, with trends as well. 
So I think that we're running a bit out of time. I see the time is really flying. It's already one hour past the hour already. Uh, if you're interested in this whisk tool, right here is my email address. And uh, of course, check out imamarkets.com for many of the tools there mentioned, the uh, pivot points, so the Keltner band, of course, and other tons of other indicators and extra features, 60 plus in total, dozens of them. Uh, you can check out, of course, analytics webinars, as I mentioned before, a lot of good stuff there and how you can obviously also open an account if you're interested in, uh, in starting out today. Admiralmarkets.com. And looking forward to see you maybe tomorrow. We've got Wave webinar coming up. So hope to see you then. Above all, I wish you all great trading. Cheers.